I'm Peter Block at ACC 20 and the World Congress of Cardiology. Uh, this is a virtual Congress this year. And with me is Mark Eisenberg from McGill. Uh, Mark, you have just finished talking about the E3 trial. So the e-cigarettes are a hot topic. Everyone's interested. Tell me what the E3 trial is and was and what kind of outcomes you've had. Well, the E3 trial is a uh, trial that you know we just completed. Um, you know, the background is that uh, it's well known that the long-term health effects of inhaling combustible tobacco from conventional cig uh, cigarettes are well established. However, it's really difficult to quit, even with the use of pharmacological behavioral therapy. The vast majority of people attempting to quit return to smoking. So, you know, over the past uh, few years, many many people have gone to e-cigarettes in an attempt to quit. But we don't know whether uh, e-cigarettes are, are safe and whether they're efficacious for smoking cessation. So that was what this trial was all about. So a randomized trial for the efficacy and safety of e-cigarettes for smoking cessation. Is that a good summary? Yeah. And what we, you know, what we did was we, we randomized smokers to, to nicotine e-cigarettes with counseling, non-nicotine e-cigarettes with counseling. So they're identical as well as a third group of counseling alone. So the nicotine and the non-nicotine were both sort of therapeutic, if you will, uh, in terms of their ability to smoke and then or smoke something. And then the counseling had nothing. Is that right, Mark? Am I reading that correctly? I hate to say counseling is nothing because that's uh, an accepted uh, therapy for for smoking cessation. But but uh, that, that's right. So we you know we took we took smokers at 17 centers in Canada. They had to smoke on average 10 cigarettes per day and they had to be motivated to quit and then they got randomized to the three arms for 12 weeks um so the but the two re, you know really active arms were ones that got nicotine e-cigarettes other arm that got non-nicotine e-cigarettes and all three groups got uh, individual counseling yeah i did not mean to diss counseling counseling is the major thing that people rely on and have relied on in the past so my apologies if i was offensive <laughs> no problem okay so uh, point prevalence abstinence. Tell me what that is, Mark. Okay, so uh, po point prevalence abstinence is a um, is a uh, commonly used uh, outcome measure for smoking cessation trials. And what that is is uh, we, we ask the participant if they've smoked even one puff of a cigarette in the previous week, and then they have to blow into a carbon monoxide monitor and achieve a level of carbon monoxide less than or equal to 10 parts per million. So if they say that they haven't smoked even one puff of a cigarette and uh, they, uh, they have a negative reading on the carbon monoxide monitor, they're considered to be abstinent at, at that time period. So that is, a, in fact, a sort of a hard endpoint when they have to blow into that CO monitor, right? That, that's right. So it's a biochemical validation. And, you know, it's, it's really important to have biochemical validation for smoking, uh, smoking cessation trials. I should say, we didn't mention it, but, the, you know, this trial was designed to, uh, and is designed to be a 12-month trial. But we, we, um, there was a, a delay in the production of, of e-cigarettes. So we had to stop the trial early in the past September. So uh, we, we changed the timing of the primary endpoint to 12 weeks when we expect the greatest difference between the groups. So that's what we're showing here. Okay. So 22, 17, and 9 for uh, nicotine e-cigarettes and counseling versus non-nicotine e-cigarettes and counseling versus counseling. Uh, those are interesting numbers. What did you expect? Is that as good as you thought? Better? Well, we, you know, our original uh, uh, assumption was that there would be a ten percent quit rate at twelve months in the uh, counseling arm. So here we're seeing it's nine percent at twelve weeks, uh, and the quit rates were seventeen percent in the in the non nicotine e cigarette arm and twenty two percent in the uh, the nicotine e cigarette arm. So. I, you know, I, I think that uh, this shows that nicotine e-cigarettes uh, with counseling double uh, quit rates at 12 weeks compared to counseling alone, which is, you know, it's, it's very, very good, uh, you know, statistically significant. You can see there's a risk difference of 12.8% and a relative risk of 24 And the uh, results for non-nicotine e-cigarettes were, uh, you know, al almost achieved uh, significance as well with, you know, intermediate between the nicotine e-cigarettes and counseling. So I think this is very good, but there's no question that the e-cigarettes e are not a magic bullet for smoking cessation. It's much better than counseling alone, but e even so, we're looking at almost uh, a little over, I'm sorry, almost 80% 
of individuals were, were still smoking to some extent at, at, uh, at 12 weeks. It's always sort of fun to look back and say, okay, what is the take home message here? So I'm going to turn to you, Mark, and say, uh, give me the conclusions that you were able to draw with this a truncated trial and what your plan is and what you learned. You know, our conclusions were the following. Uh, first, that nicotine e-cigarettes with individual counseling for 12 weeks is efficacious for smoking cessation compared to counseling alone. I think, I think that's quite clear. Uh, second, that non-nicotine e-cigarettes with individual counseling appear to have uh, benefits that are intermediate between those of nicotine uh, uh, e-cigarettes with counseling and counseling alone. Uh, we didn't show the, the data. I think you saw it, though, that we had very few uh, adverse events, but we clearly need longer-term safety data. And uh, finally, you know, longer-term follow-up data from the E3, E3 trial is needed to see if these, uh, these benefits for smoking cessation persist over time. So we're going to, you know, we're continuing to collect uh, our six-month and 12-month data. In fact, the last, uh, the last participant with six-month data was just last week. Uh, so we're going to be analyzing that as well. So I think the, the results of this trial look very promising for e-cigarettes for smoking cessation, but really we need to see whether a short-term use of e-cigarettes, uh, whether the benefits uh, persist over time. Okay, well, thanks, Mark, so much. And uh, I think what we can say is more to come from you, and we all look forward to hearing about this e-cigarettes continue to be hot. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Thanks for having me.